As a photographer, you spend tons of time and resources on making sure that you get the best possible picture. Unfortunately, the results of our hard work can be completely forgotten in just the swipe of a finger. Because of this, I believe that the finished print is the best punctuation that you can make to realize your vision. Printing can be an amazing experience and one that can inform how you see your work, interact with your work, and help you grow. Many people have difficulty getting their prints to match their monitor. In the last couple of lessons, we've tackled the display as well as the image capture. So how does a printer play a part in this process? Let's go ahead and take a quick step back. Here I have several different types of paper, some of them photographic related and some not, but each help with this example. We have good old paper towel, toilet paper, newspaper, and a glossy paper. Imagine if I dropped a single drop of water on each of them. The water drop would behave differently on each of the papers, right? That's because each paper has specific qualities that make the paper up. Not only are they constructed differently, but if you look closely, each of them are actually different colors of white. Ink on paper behaves exactly the same way. How it interacts with the paper differs from different paper types and affects how the colors are seen. As we did before with the monitor and the image, we need to be able to get a standard set of colors, measure them, and then adjust the capacity of the printer to make sure that we're all speaking the same language. Thankfully, we can use the exact same tool that we've been using through this whole process, the i1 Studio. Let's walk through this now. Install the X-Rite software if you've not already done so, and let's start the printer calibration process. For this, I'm going to create a custom profile on my Epson R3000. Now keep in mind that each printer can behave differently as well. So if you're creating a profile, you're creating one for a specific printer and a specific paper. I'm going to be using this Ilford Gallery Smooth Pearl paper. If I were using something different, like a gold fiber paper from Ilford, I would want to create a different profile. Selecting the right paper for the right print is one of my favorite parts. It really is the photographic equivalent of choosing the right wine, if you're into that sort of thing. We'll switch the dial to the 7 o'clock position to calibrate the device. Once that's done, set it to the 6 o'clock position and you're ready to scan. Now the software will print out a series of color patches for you to review. After letting them dry fully, we're going to use the i1 Studio to measure what these patches look like. For this, we'll need to take the unit out of the monitor calibration patch. Move the device along the color lines and the i1 Studio will record what it sees. Repeat this process for each strip of color for every reference sheet that is printed. Once this is complete, you will have a custom profile that you can use that ensures that the color that you see on the screen matches the final print every time. I'm going to give this a name that starts with the Epson R3000 and the name of the paper. Back inside of Lightroom, when I'm ready to print, I can switch to the profile for the exact paper by going into the print job and selecting it. Once that's complete, we can set some final settings in the printer itself and voila, the paper matches the print every time. Now remember to turn off color management on the printer driver before we print out of Lightroom or Photoshop. While the i1 Studio does a phenomenal job of making sure that you get the best colors out of your prints, they have taken printing to another level with letting you make custom profiles for black and white prints. Make sure that you check that out and all of the other lessons to get up to speed on the site. If you want to learn more, make sure you visit xrifephoto.com. My name is RC. Thanks for watching.